welcome to Startup to Success. Today I have Brandy Rossi as my guest, who is the co-founder and COO of Bulk, which she founded with Matthew Medine. And she is going to talk about sustainability and being green today. Brandy, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to have you. I love talking to you anytime we talk. I feel like people stand around waiting for us to stop talking to each other. So that's a, always a good conversation. Um, I'm actually really excited. I've, I've got a lot of irons in the fire. So I guess it's really hard when people do these sorts of interviews. They say, well, what are you up to? I'm like, well, I've got, you know, laundry in the dryer and I'm baking a pie, but for business. <laughs> Um, I want to give a shout out to something I'm launching in Sedona because I know a lot of our listeners on your side will, are probably people that realize that Sedona has become a miniature Los Angeles yes. haven for a lot of Los Angelinos who live the healthy lifestyle. Um, I curated a pretty special organic tonic and juice bar that's different than anything they have down there right now. I really went deep into the elevations of just nature's medicines and, wow. and giving people an opportunity to elevate their experiences inside the vortexes down there. And, you know, I come into those situations like vortexes and I experienced it and it's like a sound bath. The first one I went to, I was all, mm -hmm. I walked out like, I need more. I know, I, that's so, how I felt. <laughs> uh, we launched that uh, in about a month, it'll open. So if you're ever in Sedona, Sedona's super tiny. It's right on the main drag in that nice beshes. Um, it's where the yoga hot yoga place is. Okay. I'm still acclimating myself to where things are, but you should check it out. It's it's pretty special. Um, and the drinks that I made, and I par actually partnered with Romania Dean Thomas on this, which is super exciting. He's the he created Shaman Shack. I know a lot of people listening probably know who that is, but he yeah. actually did that thing we all wanted him to do is to create his own boutique blends and anything he does, as far as being talk about a master of his craft, he is the guy where if he jumps, we jump and we don't ask where we're just going with it. And I want to say that he's definitely at the peak of his creative career with these uh, blends that he has. So I definitely want to uh, give honor to that. Uh, and then my main big beast of course is, me wanting to just irritate all the mass grocery stores by creating a mass package free grocery store, which is like having to be pregnant for four years. It's basically what it is, but it's so rewarding when the baby's finally born and we're getting ready to launch that knock on wood Q1, Q2 of next year. It's just, there's a lot of moving parts in that. And with that, I was blessed. I actually met Matthew at Erwan when I was nutrition director there he just started a conversation with me and from there we've just kind of blossomed this idea together of we're sick of packaging we're sick of seeing all the trash how can we offer these amazing organic products at the front you know on stage but backstage we have all this toxicity right. and we're really trying to master how to give that to the community and I've been blessed with a lot of my brands if not most to all of them that I worked with at Erwan right. wanting to have something green on their resume because I will look at their company and say this is what you could do differently right we just we're not recreating the wheel we're just using a different kind of rubber and it's been really amazing to see the people that even have tried to go into a room with their own company and say okay how can we do this well we're going to create these labels for these jars and do the refill like it's it's amazing the things that we're going to be doing um I'm really excited for. And I think it's a need right now based on what's going on in the world. And that's the hard part, right? Like COVID has really changed all of us. Not for the better, I think in a lot of ways, as far as how we maintain ourselves. But I think just being able to offer people more security with their foods during this time is super important. Yeah, I I love it, and I want to I want to dive into in, into sustainability and and being more green a little bit more because that's something that I've been, um, you know, as a company as a as a, as the owner of Roma Leaf, I've been somewhat struggling with because, you know, you you know our products they come in a bottle glass glass jar and and if we don't put it in a box, then the chances are that it could break. So how do we 
you know, how, how would you recommend that we think about sustainability as a brand that has 11 products, nothing too complicated, but like if we were to really start thinking really green, well, what do you suggest we do? I think the big disruptor right now in packaging is that hemp bioplastic that's being created. I, th I think you've heard rumors about that. And it does present itself when it's really curated the right way to look like a high-end product. And for you, the hard part, when I look at your brand, for example, is you change the game as far as offering something that is aesthetic and high-end in you know that granola organic industry. Um, they do have currently, it changes going from glass, obviously with your creams, they have a, a compostable, it's, it's, it's like, it's brown paper packaging, but it's a squeeze tube and oh. they still offer the, um, the ability to label it, but it does break down completely um, and can go back into the earth at any time. There are five or six different new things on the market too, even something that's coming out of a banana peel that I've read. I mean, my thing is every day I try to find somebody that's working on something to okay. create for that. Um, but I think at the end of the day, I always want to tell people, well, eventually we're all just going to be package free. So what it's going to be is they bring the jar. We've got the guy with the little ice cream scoop yep. and he's just refilling the jars or refilling the tinctures. Now, my thing with your oils, again, a bartender tap is only a, a beer tap because there's beer on it. When you put a full bottle of your beautiful CBD on there and I pour it back into the bottle, it's the same concept. We've just removed the packaging. And what's funny about the thing that you said about putting your jar in a cardboard box in all the years of shipping and receiving, can I tell you what that box does to protect your jar? Nothing. <laughs> nothing. It does nothing because when that jar hits the floor, it's still hitting the floor, even though it's inside. What it does for me is it keeps all the glass that I have to sweep up inside the box. And I think I started a conversation with someone one day about this, like taking your average package, you've got the box and then you've got the sticker that seals right. the box. And then you open it, you've got the product and then you've got the seal around the product. Then you open the lid, you've got the paper seal. By the time I'm done, I need... This is why pharmaceutical drugs exist for people with anxiety. We yeah. have package anxiety. And it's, it's something that I think has been, I mean, it was a wonderful creation in the 40s and 50s, right? Marketing was beautiful. Right. right. The concept back then wasn't, we're going to create something that's going to damage our world. They didn't do it with malintent. And I get really upset with people that say, oh, this was, they should have done this and this. It, nobody knew that it would get this huge, Right. And everybody wants to have a positive experience with a product, but 90% of people, if they were to be interviewed privately would say, I love the product. And then someone would ask them, well, how is it opening the product? And just video yeah. reactions of people when they say, oh, well, if I didn't have to X, Y, Z, one, two, three, if I could just crack it and go, I think they would admit that it would be something they felt good about those that are consciously aware now you you know we always have that demographic that doesn't think like that but it's getting right. smaller it is so and i think if we where i grew up in the midwest it's even reaching there and if you can reach the bible belt with these things then you're good right yeah so i mean i feel like if we all just try to work together like we could sit down and say okay this is how aesthetic your product is you've got the label the biggest thing for you is Branding is just branding, right? Like Roma Leaf is Roma Leaf. It's not going to change who you are in the architecture of things. You can have several options for packaging. If you started, let's say a, a kiosk in a, in a mall with a jar refill program there and you did those in like different outlets, that's an option. If somebody wants shipping, you could do the compostable container, you know, that the, the little brown packaging with your logo that eventually, number one, you have the people that will buy a product and take 10 years to use it. With this kind of thing, it keeps them more accountable for actually using the product to get the results. Because with your product, it is an application yeah. to feel relief. You're not, you'll feel it after one time, but if you're actually using it to remedy, you want to consistently exactly. use the product. And if you have a container that's going to eventually not be there, you're going to use the product. You're going to be more consciously aware of taking care of yourself at the same time, whether you know it or not. 
I guess the, the, the problem that I've been having, and it's interesting because we're going through a bit of a rebrand, just a refresh rather than the rebrand. And, um, and part of that was, you know, to, to figure out how to be sustainable, how to change our packaging so that we're not using so many things. But then people, a lot of people still care about aesthetics. They care about the quality, like they care about the box. And it's just so weird for me because I'm in the business and I'm like, what a waste. I just wasted, you know, a dollar or something on the box and the thing. I, I rather cut that cost and pass it on to the consumer than waste it on this box that's going to go to trash. But people, I feel like are still judging brands by the looks of the packaging and the bottle and how pretty it is. So how do we compete as a brand in that? I'll tell sense? you the mistake most people who rebrand make. They don't talk to their public about it. Mm -hmm. They don't give an explanation of it. And they don't unabashedly say, not apologizing, I'm trying to save the planet. If you got ahead of your packaging, the key is to get ahead of your packaging because most people will do this. They see new packaging and it might not be as flashy and shiny as before. They automatically think, oh, they must have financial issues. And that's just the way, for right. whatever reason, people think. Right. But when people rebrand, especially if you do it right away, that's, you should never rebrand within five years of, of building a product is what I say, because that's when you're kind of in the spotlight, right? And that's when you're in the incubator and you're really trying to just keep consistency. But if you do make it a project of goodness, I always tell people rebrand with your captain in the front saying, we don't want to be the pretty box that gets thrown away. That doesn't compost all the way down. We don't want to be part of the trash problem in our country. Therefore, if you love our products, you're going to love what we're doing. And then get people on board and, and make it a viral thing. Yeah. Constantly be doing these kinds of things like podcasts, talking about your rebrand or how you're excited. Get samples of new kinds of packaging and have interviews like this where we talk about it. I get one, you get one. We go over what it's like. Yeah. We actually start to review Mm -hmm. the opportunities that are out there to keep things green yet aesthetic yeah. you never it's not that it's not going to be aesthetic because your logo itself the brand is yeah. beautiful you could put a roman leaf sticker on a wall and people would stop and go oh that yeah. soft color the architecture what is this yeah. so i feel like if you look at that no matter where you put it it's like human beings if we got like Americans, if we got kicked out of America, we'd still be Americans even if we went somewhere else. You know, it's it's not about erasing the board completely. It's about using a different kind of board. And that's all it really is. But again, announcing that you're doing this amazing rebranding project because these are the problems that you see in the world and this is the opportunity you have to make it different. And really connecting with the people who can get that message out there to say, Flashy is, I'd say it, flashy is fucked. <laughs> you know, like exactly. let's start doing better for ourselves and for our communities by keeping a beautiful product in a way that doesn't add to the problem. And I mean, adding to the problem is also sometimes when you do nothing to the problem, you're adding to the problem by staying with the problem, right? You're not you're not adding to it, but you're not helping it. And I feel like that's now where we've moved into, if you're not part of the problem, you're not part of the solution. That kind of thing is, if you're not doing anything to even back away from the problem a little bit, you are the problem, whether you like it or not, right? Yeah. I mean, we, we encounter this every time we go shopping for the things we need in our homes. And I, I'm mortified more and more and more just even by the little plastic seals on but why do we need that yeah you know there, there's so many things like this being if this was made of hemp and it would just you know disintegrate people would drink water faster i always said that if you put water in a compostable package people would drink it more how do you get people to drink water well tell them that they're going to come home to a flooded refrigerator they'll be more aware of it you know uh but yes definitely be your biggest fan for rebranding and get ahead of it and say this is why Otherwise we get, you know, new packages and you're leaving everybody's perception, right? Perception is what does it for everybody. And everybody has a different perception of everything, right? And we all look at, like you and I can look at 
what's behind you? Some car just went by, I could see, you know, we all look for different things in images. All those electrical pulses in our brain are very different. So perception when left alone is a, is a lot Freudian, right? It can be very dark. And unfortunately with America, it's glass half empty first nowadays. So we have to kind of, we have to be the Joan of Arc of our own creativity. We really do. That's the big difference is we can't let people assume, you know, the word assume, ask you, me, and they do that. And there's no credibility in that for you to just let it be that way. You don't have to let it be that way. Yeah. And then the people that sell your products too, I think what I see in bigger markets is the disconnect that we never used to have, right? The owners were hands-on with the staff and the training and, and all of that. And you know me, I was a huge advocate and pretty much a drill sergeant about my staff knowing every new product and how to sell it and really getting into one-on-ones with you to where you're like, wow, they even pushed me for questions I needed to answer about my own products. Oh, yeah. needs her, to onboarding, come back. her onboarding was something I've never, ever seen with any <laughs> retail store, the amount of information and how well organized it was. I mean, I, I, I personally was impressed by that. Well, and I think that too, like when you're standing in an aisle and a customer's there and you're having a cut, let's say we were having a conversation, but the customer's looking at it, it's an opportunity to see staff be completely engaged and ed- educated. That They should be able to say, not just this about the product itself, but what it's carried in. And until we get the conversation to go with both product and packaging as a benefit, I feel like we're still going to struggle. Not only is this product amazing for your body, but X, Y, Z on the packaging equals zero carbon footprint. That's an amazing conversation. And I know that it's there. I know it's part of our future. I think we all in our industry want that. And we were the ones who, you know, there are people that would never have shopped at Whole Foods that shop at Whole Foods because we created those concepts, right? So we just need to create those concepts and find ways together. I mean, there's never a time when there's too much information, you know, that that's no such thing. That's such a bad phrase because we're all going to have solutions for each other, you know? Do you think it would be less expensive to make that switch or, or in the beginning? I do because it would be community involvement. And I think you'll see your sales go up. Like you have to wait for the swing of profitability, but people will follow you. If you're like the Pied Piper of, of refill. And I've always said in all those markets that we currently have, no one's tried to do a refill station yet. And you can yeah. I mean, you have all these tiny little tear stores that do it all the time, but why not set up an actual end cap kiosk in the store that's a refillable station? You know, the, the initial investment and based on what you'll get in the return, you just have to get to the finish line with it. Once you're there, the sky's the limit. You know, oh, you, oh we've got a Roma Leaf refill station. Oh, guess who's getting a Roma Leaf refill station? Yeah. You generate that kind of excitement about yeah. what you're doing. But if you as a business owner aren't excited about it and you express fear or yeah, hesitate, sure. like, do you think it's a good idea? No. Think everything's a good idea until it's not. That's why I say, if you flip it around, the glass is always half full. Yeah. What do you have to fear at this point, right? Because the one, number one, your logo and your branding and your product are amazing. So you've got the hardest part done. Yeah. You really have the opportunity now to play around with, how do I make this better how is my product going to do something good for xyz yeah yeah and in terms of um you know as you know we do plan on pitching to vcs and raise raise money and and go through all of that my hope was to to bring sustainability into the brand into the story as soon as possible so that that's an added it's a huge okay disco ball that's shiny for investors because they they do know the importance of having a diversified investment portfolio right they've got this and this but anybody looking at investors always looks at what they invest in right even just it's like us what we put in our bodies what they put their money into and more and more and more especially since you know cbd has become like such a finally such a, a healing tool for these big business, stressed out business guys as well, they want to put their money into something good. So if you've got a great product that's also sustainable, that's a win-win situation. A lot of times what people don't hear about with investments, and I've been learning this, just building out this concept is 
that's usually a conversation that will come up mm -hmm. after somebody invests they say okay let's look at the cleanup side like we've got this product now right. you know you've always got we always call them the enemy but the person that comes in and they let's look at your brand xyz devil's advocate but more of these devil's advocates now are how can we make your product better mm -hmm. and not the product for use but the planets the green footprint is a a great thing it was like when we created certified organic or biodynamic all these terminologies that really educate the uneducatable mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. it's the same thing with sustainable packaging and that's going to be a new one too is there's going to have that there's an s with a i'm not going to pretend to remember what the little logo symbol is but it's going to be for this packaging is identified as sustainable and that's going to be a whole thing you can look up and it's going to start listing all the different kinds of uh things that packaging is going to be made out of in the next 10 20 years and so you know if you yeah. really want the really good way to do it you should just shop europe go to europe and find the most sustainable packaging because they you know denmark finland new zealand any companies coming out of there for packaging they are going to you know they're going to pave the way they always do the cleanest living in, the, in those countries is there for a reason and even with their look at their major market that they have i studied the package free market system over there for the last two three years because for them it's like breathing right how do they make it look so easy well because they don't explain anything to their customers they just put it there and say these are your options right and like if you build it they will come that's such a true yeah. thing if you create a tennis shoe they will put it on their foot you just have to have the confidence to go i'm working with these people this company Matthew and I, Matthew found this um, meal delivery service from New Zealand mm -hmm. that wants to be in bulk, but it's in compostable packaging. Wow. So it, yeah, the packaging is completely compostable. There's zero carbon footprint on this. And it's, you can know, you it's- define, So food. sorry, can you define what a compost, like what happens to that packaging? So like it, different when it breaks down, it's absolutely eco-friendly. So if it's made um, from plant fiber, what does that mean? If it's made from- tapioca flour and it goes dead it's completely healthy for the earth it came from the earth so it can go back into the earth and that's where you need to source like oh if it's made from 100 percent hemp and then you're good and it breaks down that fiber is going back into the soil super important as above so below if you look at packaging that way that's the best way to do it and they are ahead of the game over there they really are and it's not that i want to take away from american what it does but we don't have as many options to pioneer those healthy package free options as we can when we go there and they're like oh we make it out of a birch tree great wow right i mean if you go back to <laughs> i say the simpler days i mean we we want to talk post caveman but pre-business suit yeah. somewhere in between there we had the refillable milk jugs because we what happened to the milkman what happened to, you know, like what happened to, that's a very important question. And it all comes down to this, right? But we do now have an opportunity to show how this will come back by going back to these, you know, these simpler options. Right. I mean, you can make, you know how glass is made with the rods and the sand and lightning and like there's, we can make plenty of glass. We can even recycle glass and make new glass, crush it and rebuild it into jars. I love glass for that, but of course we also come into don't drop it. X, right. y, Z. So in the other options that we have out there, it's going to create an exciting time. I think you're going to see in the next five to 10 years that we're really going to push through into that next arena. And the first thing you have to have the person that's creating a market the size of Whole Foods that's packaged free. We have those tiny stores and I appreciate those, but if I can't offer you something where you can walk in and you're like, oh, there's my, and there's my, and there's mm -hmm. my, I'm not doing the right thing because otherwise I should just stay in the tiny little curated arenas. But we want the people that are filling those parking lots to be going somewhere where the only footprint they have until we get them an electric car is that car that took them there. Right. And we have to start with that. I feel. I love it. I love it. So tell me a little bit about the 
I know right before we jumped on, we were talking about the financial side of uh, you know, yes. doing business, which you and I- I'm drinking my wine now before we talk oh about Oh God, that. please. I, I wish I wow. could. It's, <laughs> but it's, again, I think that the example I gave was we never used algebra, but it teaches you a lot. Like I'm working with an amazing financial, she's just, She's like the wizard of financial Oz. Her name is Rhonda Pittman. She's actually here in LA with hey, me. I referred you to Rhonda. Yeah, Rhonda. Yes. Rhonda and I are the same person. We were twins. Okay, so I'm so excited that. because Rhonda was on. She We interviewed Rhonda, uh, I think, two episodes ago. Nice. So nice. yeah, and and I plan on bringing like Rhonda. I, I plan on bringing Rhonda on board to help me with my financial stuff with Rama. What I can well. tell you is, but it is not, better than any professor I ever had. It's when I amazing. texted you guys, I I knew you were gonna just click. I just knew it. I had that feeling, and I I've been meaning to follow up with you and ask you. But then I was like, you're like this amazing woman and I'm waiting for you to mention the name. I was going to be like, is it Rhonda? No, yeah. <laughs> a while ago, course, I, I, will, I will shout her out to the planets. And the two of us have really kind of formed that we both have those wonder twin power personalities. And yep. we, we are very much, we can be emasculating to a, a, a right. group of men in ties. And that's what we, we fought hard our whole lives to become those people. But yeah. she can just do it with spreadsheets. And I'm like, girl, that's you. Like I'm over here doing this and you do this, yeah. but you need that person. But she, she looked at me with that look that she gives and goes, I'm not really doing my job, Brandy, unless I show you what? how to do this. And, and, and for me, I had to dive into it because if I can't understand the backside, I can do a lot of damage on the front side, right? We really just understanding the matrix, right? I yeah. say that because I just watched it. Understanding the the numbers that are running and what it actually generates for the energy on the other side of it is super important. And she does it in a way that's fun, yeah. but it's still like, wow, it, you know, when you're knee deep in, in these numbers and just getting inside your head and doing, you know, five-year projections, all big investors want a five-year or a 10-year, mostly yeah. a five. Yeah. That's where you have to get out of your way and not be, everybody's afraid to ask for money, right? No. She asked me, what do you want in five years? I said, I want to bulk at every country and every city. And she was like, wow, that, that's an amazing answer no one would ever say. And I'm like, that's what I want. You asked me what I wanted. And people being afraid to say what they want won't get what they want. But someone looking in going, this concept is amazing and she wants this. We're going to make sure we're on board with this. That's what you have to do. And she has shown me that. And we're still knee deep in it. Like, yeah. That's so good. But anybody needing just any small, tiny financial advice and who to go to. She's got it all. Yeah. And she creates your financial plan for her own success. She's not just doing it for your company. Her name and her passion and her blood, sweat, and tears goes into those things. I'm so and, excited because yeah. now the listeners can can really, you know, we interviewed Rhonda and I, I, I mean, I spoke so highly of her because I know her from the past, but to hear someone who's really going through it as we speak is just amazing. I, I know she's going to- She's one of those people where it's like, if I want to vent, I can vent and yep. I know that we can yep. plot things in our head we would never do and she gets it. And it's good because she, you know, we, you, you always have to have people in your business and, and just, you know, associates yep. that can take you down off the fence because you're always going to have days you're on the fence and who's the person I can talk to that'll make me see both sides, you yep. know, that's- it, it is the compliment sandwich, but it's also the, the yeah. self compliment sandwich. Like, let me say something good about what I'm doing. Then let me want to kill myself. And then let me go back to saying, how am I going to take myself out of the noose? You right. have to have the person who just says there's no noose, <laughs> you know, oh, no, we that do. person, but yeah. she's also very, very honest with the capability of what you have and how you can be more successful, which I love about her. So, but another thing that I think is so special about her is that she is not your typical boring CFO who is clueless no. about sustainability and the trends and all. She is so aware of everything. Like she understands my industry. She uses my product. She, like, she's so like she's all about sustainability. And so for for us to have someone like her to consult with. Uh, or, or, or you or, are a great matchmaker because she is the chocolate and I am the peanut butter and we are 
so together passionate love about I love that, that that just sustainable yeah. reasons peanut butter cup there we really want to like she's the perfect other side of it and you know we take advantage of those things right it's like oh i don't got to do it you can do it she gives me that dead stare that says yeah i'll learn, I, it. I'll learn. <laughs> i respect you i'll respect you in the morning right like yeah. i respect you and i love that because we really do have the same personality and we just kind of sit there sometimes looking at people like is this really happening yeah. but she's also solutions based and for me you can have bad days, but if you're not a solutions-based person, it's really hard for me to, you know, in operations, if you deal with operations, you have to be solutions-based. Right. No matter what mood you're in, you have to always be the person who's offering solutions for other people. And with Rhonda, she offers them to you. So it's like, you know, it, it allows you to learn to offer it to yourself eventually is what I feel. And I think yeah. the fact that like when, when I, when I connected you two together over a year ago, I remember this was before, before COVID even started. Uh, my first initial thought was you are very creative, but you need someone like Rhonda who understands creativity, but can bring the numbers into right. creativity, which is also my issue. I'm very creative. I can come up with so many different ideas and marketing strategies and you know all of these things but then at the end of the day it needs to come down to dollars in order for us to continue and succeed as a business right if my ideas don't have an roi i cannot continue paying my employees to to run those campaigns or to right. do certain things so i think it's it's instrumental and i hope you still haven't done the roma mobile huh i still think it'd be great to have like a high-end Bring, bring a filling station to the communities. Pull up to how Third you, Street and pull up to Third Street with the truck. There's so many people that have taken their businesses out of brick and mortar and put them on wheels. And I know, like for us, my plan is to have two H2 Tesla semi trucks pulling yeah. these containers where you can just recreating the bookmobile. Remember the bookmobile? Yes, We're just going to do it with food. We're going to pull into your neighborhood. And just, you're going to walk in one side and come out the other and have everything you need. You have the same experience that you could give people. But how would I reassure people that it's been lab tested? Like, should I, you know, I, cause I'm literally like envisioning the ideas that you're giving me as we speak. And I'm like, okay, well, generally every batch that we produce goes randomly, you know, we pick a whole bunch and then send it to the thing. Like, how do I make sure that they're confident that it's been tested and all, you know. The I have a lot of people, I've seen a lot of different like food trucks wrap themselves in different things. Write your journey and put all of your lab test information. You know how people put the little symbol for Instagram, find us on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Find our lab tests could be a new uh -huh. thing you do. Like find our lab tests at this and then make sure it's a company that you can just click on it, type Roma Leaf and they can see it all. But make it a simple thing. You don't have to type out, just be like, Find our certified lab tests at this. Right. Make it simple. Yeah. And when yeah. people ask, the thing is you tell them and say, oh, it's on the back. Take a picture of it. Take it home. You can test it. You can look at it right now or click on the scan this barcode. That's an e easier thing, right? Like have a barcode. Scan yeah. our barcode right now on your phone, like the menus now for COVID, right? Yeah. You scan the barcode, a menu comes up. Why couldn't you do that with your lab test? It's only a menu on the barcode right now because that's what restaurants are doing. But for you, that barcode clicks them right to your lab test. And you're pulling up this sexy truck that's got whatever, and you then have developed out this whole thing. You could have Roma leaf spritzers where you have carbonated waters with the Roma leaf and some whatever you wanted to do. And then aesthetically, they can come into the shop in the back and you just refilling station. You just put all of your stuff in ice cream at ice cream shops, they have those gallon ice creams. Why yeah. can't that have CBD in it? And then you're just refilling the jars. Oh, yeah, you I have that. Then you can go anywhere to every yoga event, to yeah. every Pilates event, to anything you want to put yourself next to and be a part of, you can because you just have to turn it on and drive it there. And I'm telling you with everybody, like we're, we're, we're you know, Los Angeles sadly right now is gutting, right? We both know when everybody's leaving yeah. LA, but the biggest reason people are leaving LA is to have that freedom and that sustainability of land again. Okay. Businesses working remotely is the new thing. Nobody wants to go to an office anymore. Mm -hmm. I think it's so healthy and it's a very European thing. Like Europe laughs at us. They just look at us like, look at these idiots thinking they're reinventing work. We've been doing this for years, right? They just never have taken credit for things that are just 
so simple. Now America's like, we have this new thing where we can work from home. It's hybrid. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> you know, I've been working from home at the, the, I've been using Zoom since 2000, I want to say 10. Being in the tech space, tech industry, you know how the industry is. You're, yeah. in, you're in it. Well, I mean, even being able to talk to people now, like this woman who's got this food company and I'm talking to her and now I'm like, okay, so I'm coming to New Zealand. <laughs> you know, yeah. you, you, the, the currency of energy in human beings is so undervalued. And I know that because a lot of us, even as I'm an introvert, so you, I know you don't think I am, but really when it comes to that, like sharing energy, yeah, it's a different way to do things. But right. in having said that, going back to your business, of course, stay in the brick and mortars, but the Roma mobile away from, from retails a little bit, just a little bit. we because it we got affected too. COVID obviously impacted a lot of the retailers that we were wholesaling to, and they closed, and some paid us, some didn't. So it, there was an impact, negative impact. And I wanna, I wanna reduce that as much as I can and have more control. And I literally, as you were speaking, I was envisioning the truck, the truck, and the whole, all of it. My only like, my only concern is okay. Well. If I have the, the ice cream sort of looking pumps, whatever, and I have the CBD and then I got the QR codes for the lab test, but what do I refill it in and give it to them? Like, it, should it just be a jar or should, like, what, what do you think? Listen, it, if you act like your product is a restaurant product and you look, look with health codes, you've got to, you know, wear the hermetically sealed right. gloves, ice yeah. beekeeper's gloves. Beekeeper's gloves are only beekeeper's gloves because that's what they're used for. But when you put those on and you start serving people feel safe with that, you've got the, you know, the, make it look just like a high-end ice cream stand for the cream. And then with the bottles, it's just a bartending thing. You've got the the, the tincture bottles. You can do whatever you want, but if they want it in a different, like they bring their own bottle. Here's a, here's a quiz for you. If somebody brings you a bottle to fill, what do you have to do? Just refill it. And then you base the price on ounce. A discount. Exactly. Right. And then you just do the tear on the ounce and you're good. And what I would do is create a compostable logo sticker and you can just slap it on and say, this is now, you know what it is. And this, you know, that's, that's all you have to do. And you can make it sexy. You can have great music coming out of it. There are different options now about the kinds of vehicles you can use. I see you in the Mercedes. I'm not going to lie. And that's not a bad thing because then your footprint is green, right? Like you're, you're yeah. getting a nice one. It's the black one, but inside you can make it anything. You can put the nice shelves and have your product and people come in and experience it again, get like a carbonated, you know, just soda water thing, kegerator in there, and then just serve people a relaxing drink. You can do anything you want to do. You can pull that into, you can pull your truck literally into a health and nutrition expo. You can be outside and you control your own thing. Then you're networking and people are like, you should go to this event, that event. You don't have to be in that truck. You just have somebody that can represent you the okay. best you can. And then you just add to your fleet, right? And then you become yeah. part of this wellness community and all like Miami needs that for seniors. I think it would go over well in Miami, yeah. Fort Lauderdale area, Chicago, New York. You get into all the, you just have one truck per city yeah. and yeah. they're responsible for their own growth or not growth. And that's it. And then you also become the drop-off delivery service. That truck can literally drop off orders in every city. So if you as a network, you as a website get orders, right? There's some going to Dallas. Let's say you get 67 orders in Dallas. Just if you have a truck in Dallas, guess what? You just forward that to those guys and they take care of that delivery service. And then people start feeling connected and cared about again. They're not getting a cardboard box that's packaging. <laughs> the truck's just rolling up saying, do you want it? And they, I have a jar. Okay, well. Here's the truck. They're going to come and fill it up for you. That is such beautiful personalization that it's impossible to get the person who stopped learning how to talk to people like we all have, right? Yeah. Wait, what do we do? Yeah, that's all we do. Wait, I should have been talking to you like this the whole time, right? <laughs> but it reconnects people yeah. so that yes. they start looking at you and they want to support you. That's how it is. They want to support you because you're giving them something that makes them feel cared for and you're not just a box on a shelf right. and like I said it dials back if you're on the shelf you need that customer service team to be right. educated the way that I had my staff be with you they're, right. they they they're very intelligent people or they want to be and yeah. they can sell they need to be you when you're not there 
Otherwise, your product, your, your product should always be an animated product because the person on that sales floor has your back. They got you. They pick your product up and they are as good as you. They don't not look like you, but the words they're speaking are right. all you. If you don't have that, you've got those wheels of freedom. You can just network. It's all about networking. Like Herbalife, why were they so successful? Why is Herbalife successful? And it's a really good example of how a company started like this and it lasted. And there's a lot, like there's the Nat Ketones. I'm a fan of them. Um, there's, uh, there's a couple companies that are usually, you know, referrals, da, 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 but Herbalife offers free fitness workouts. And I have a friend of mine about 15 years ago, a trainer in Hollywood, you know, all the guys are trainers in Hollywood. He was just struggling to like make his mark. And he started, with them and their product number one their products are amazing but he just kept doing these free workouts and then he built the video workout so people could tune in on their phones and it's created him into this to see him develop from this like just this trainer guy to like this guy that's people are tuning into his shows and his podcasts and his workouts and even just his five second advices now from all over the world and it was because they offered something good with their products that were already good well, if you do that, yeah, you know, building a community ultimately, and people need to see more of you. You are such a good, like I always tell Matthew, I'm like, we're going to make everybody look at you for this. I don't want to be no, a but, the is, but then Rhonda said the opposite. Rhonda said, yeah. no, no, you, you need you to be the, the, you know, the, the Howard Stern of organics. And I'm like, that works. You. But with you, you have an ability to reach so many people on that creativity level, right? Because you also have that marketing in there. And that's something where I didn't go into marketing, but I'll create off the top of my head. I'll just look at you and say, do this, do that, flip this, go. Right, you know? right. And I think that's a, that's a benefit for you and your company. And I think where you could go with this and the problem we have is just where CBD actually sits now with the government. Like when the government gets out of its own way, yeah, it takes, the isolate, great. Take it and go. Go go play with the isolate, but leave us alone. Your ability to create a lot of different things then is good, right? Like you can move into your own beauty line. What kind of food line would you want to be invited and invested mm -hmm. into? And like we said, those high-end curated hotel markets mm -hmm. where you want to be, you know, you want to be that little candy, the bedtime candy that people take or anxiety candy. Like everybody says that, you know, bad habits, like candy, candy, candy. Well, what if it's something healthy that actually helps you? You know, I mean, that's where eventually we'll be able to be without all of these restrictions. And I think that's the hardest thing, right? When we're having this conversation, we both know the elephant in the room is, but the FDA, but the FDA. And I don't want to speak badly because whatever they're doing, they also have a plan for whatever they're doing. It just, it, it really crushes creativity and it's really hard you know but the FDA also didn't approve the vaccine and they're forcing us to take it so let's that's a whole other topic you do yeah. not want to get me started on that's a whole other podcast and i would go <laughs> this means woke in italian and i would go uh -huh. off on it. trust me i just saw the the disney walmart sanctioning like companies are starting to sanction and it's this is going to be the divide of our country and people thought it was the election and it's not it's no, this it's disease definitely and is. yeah I agree. It's at the end of the day, it's just a whole other topic. I try not to go too deep because I don't want to wave my flags too much, but I definitely have, I think we've all suffered realities, awakenings, and, and even been blessed by them since COVID has started. And, you know, now we're going back in to repeat the whole, right? We're getting back in the hamster wheel. People yeah. that think we're not going back to square one, no, we are. they're just... They're denying what's going to happen in the next three to four months. They just are, you know, yeah. and because you legitimately, if you can't make a whole population do something, the only other answer is to shut things down to keep people okay. safe. And I know here we go. That's all I'm saying. I'm telling people, you know, you better hang on, hang on to your bootstraps because this is going to be an ugly rough ride now, because it's not just, we're not afraid of COVID, we're afraid of each other. And I think that's the thing that, you know, when we're, when we're afraid of a non-human entity, it kind of bonds you as humans, right? But when yeah. you're afraid of humans, yeah, yeah, it's, 
creates that tension. And we already had that. I mean, 2020 was, I can't even describe 2020, right? 2020 was all your bad, broken relationships in one year, right? Like just slammed. Um, and you, we all just really, we went through that gauntlet and yeah. came out different people. All of us did. Like every single human could definitely tell you they endured something during COVID, right? That was just practice, guys. And I keep telling people that was just practice. So reach out to your people, have support teams, and we just are all going to try to get through it the best we can. You know? Yeah. Randy. I think we've talked for like two hours. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I knew it was going to be so easy with you. I mean, I can't get enough of you and your ideas. And oh, oh, thank you. I just want to thank you so much for coming and Absolutely. joining. And, well, coming. I guess we, if COVID didn't exist, we would have met in person and right. But, right but yeah thank you i appreciate you and all the Absolutely. ideas i actually i'm probably gonna put some some stuff together and run it by you because i really do want to get serious about this and also include this in my business plan to uh to pitch to vc so i'm probably gonna lean on you for some support and you know <laughs> i'm always here to support you in any way yes you have you've been wonderful you gave me rhonda i owe you for like thank three decades you. because she thank is you. amazing my pleasure. I love her. I love you both, actually. Uh, I, at some point, you should have us on together because I think that would be quite an interesting. <laughs> we have quite a parody between us. It really actually, is. I and we don't I, apologize for it. We're very like stern faced, but really jokey. I love that. When we when I talk with her in our Zoom meetings, it's much like this. Yeah. So no, I love I it. Team Rhonda. We will. We'll get you both on board. Probably have like a financial do's and don'ts and all of that. I think right. we all benefit. Well, we, we, we could create a whole show right now based on the last week with us. I, I think with her, that incubator Q&A for us would give her an opportunity to explain to people what roles and companies actually mean, because we've come up to that in my wow. company and where she's like, no, you need to be this. Uh -huh. You know, and it's everybody always thinks, oh, you have the flash and bravado. She's like, no, that person does this. That's fine. But you need to be this grabbing me by my shirt. Like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you and I, need, you and I need Rhonda on a daily basis. Too. No, yeah, we, you know, like, we need Rhonda to be replicated. Yeah. I feel like that's she's one of the people in life where that movie multiplicity. Everybody yeah. needs a Rhonda. Help me, Rhonda. She hates it, but it's true. Like, <laughs> we all had like a Rhonda button we could push. We, yeah. would be much yeah. better off. we should start yeah. pushing it at the same time so she goes crazy. <laughs> that would be great marketing for her is the Rhonda button, you know? That would be great. Yeah. yeah. Well, again, thank you so much for joining Absolutely. me today. I, I hope to have you back again so we can learn a little bit more about bulk. I know you helped me solve my problem today rather than speak about your, your exciting. Uh, ventures but maybe in a we'll month leak it out when matthew gets back i would love to have him and i together i think that would be a oh, great yes. uh way to to explain it and get a little more excited and you know he's so he's so calm and entertaining and i'm like the one swinging from the rafters so it's a good balance it's a good marriage it sounds so, yeah. good we'll do All it right. you. thank you so much Bye -bye. have a great day you too